Today is March 18th. We are continuing with Section A3, which is still circles. Yesterday, we wrote the equation of circles when we were given information about it. Today, we are going to have an equation already there for us, but it's not going to be in standard form. So we're going to put it in standard form by completing the square. Not a whole lot of new information, just using it a little bit differently. Please make sure you're dating and titling your notes because remember I will randomly ask for them. You need to make sure you have them. Also keep your folders handy because when I do ask to pick those up you're going to take whatever I ask for and stick it in that folder. Do you have assignment number two? I have all your assignments right now. I haven't had a chance to grade them yet. I'll get them back to you before I call for anything. Okay, yesterday we said if ever you see an equation where there's an x and a y present and both x and y's are being squared, you need to recognize that it's a circle. Are you okay? Yeah. You sure? Oh. Are you hurting? No, fine. Why do you have a sock in there? Oh. All right. We're going to take this equation of the circle and we're going to put it in standard form. And the way we're going to do that is we want all our x's and our y's on one side of the equal sign. And then that 5 that you see there, I want it on the other side because it's somehow part of my radius. Okay? So, I'm going to rearrange and organize this where I put my x terms together and I am going to complete the square in order to get this equation looking like I want it to. I'm going to put my y terms together and I'm going to complete the square here because remember in the equation you have x minus something squared and y minus something squared. And when I move my 5 to the other side of the equal sign, what does it become? Positive. It becomes plus 5 because I'm changing sides. Okay? In order to remove it here, I've got to add 5 to both sides. Now, this is a little different from the parabolas. In the parabolas, all the changes were taking place on one side of the equal sign. <laughs> So, if I had this and it was equal, and I added 2 in order to balance it back out without affecting the left-hand side of the equation, I did what? I subtracted 2, and it's still equal. This time, our changes are going to occur on both sides of the equal sign. So, if you have this equals this and you add 3 and you add 4 over here and the change needs to happen on the other side are you going to subtract 3 and 4 to the other side or add it? You're going to have to add 3 and 4 to the other side. Look at it. This is now 8 equals 8. Okay, It's because the change is occurring on both sides of the equal sign. Think of our little statement. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. With the parabola, all changes were happening on the same side. We weren't affecting both sides. We were only affecting one side. Okay. So we're going to add. Complete the square, please. You know how to do this. No, on your paper. Complete the square. Figure out what goes in the boxes and then put it on the other side. Then factor it down and get your equation.
someone want to come to the board and do it? Thank you, Corey. Very good. Check yourself. We should remember, how do you get this number? You divide the B term by 2 and square it. Same way here. You divide the B term by 2 and square it. If I am adding 4 on this side, I've got to add 4 over there. I'm adding 16 on this side, so I've got to add 16 over here. Yes. Yes, but in the other one, we, weren't, we didn't have two variables. We had one variable, and we were trying to actually figure out what x was equal to. Okay? That was one of the ways of solving a quadratic equation. But we also have the quadratic formula and factoring. This is how it has to be done to take it and put it in standard form. Okay? So now, tonight you're going to be graphing these circles. So let's go over how we graph this. Where is the center? 2, negative 4. 2, negative 4. What is the radius? 5. The radius is equal to 5. So if you're going to graph this circle, it's very, very simple. You put your center at 2, negative 4. And if your radius is 5, you're going straight up 5 units, straight down 5 units, straight out here 5, and straight out here 5. And you draw your circle to the best of your abilities. Ooh, some goose egg. Wait, where'd you get 5? The radius is 5 because this is the radius squared. Do your best. I'm going to I'm going to link online um, and it's probably going to be in an Excel a uh, some graph paper so that you can download it and print it out if you don't have time to get to the store. That way you can graph it and it'll look a little bit better. Okay, there is nothing to be done to this equation for this circle. Where is the center? Zero zero. zero, zero. The center is on the origin of our graph. And what's the radius? So if you're going to graph this circle, your center is here. You go to positive 5, negative 5, positive 5, negative 5, and you draw your circle. That's an ugly circle, but that's okay. We know what we mean. That was simple. Easy, greasy, lemon, squeezy. I'm recording. And I was thinking the same. Okay. No, it's always going to be the same. For the midpoint formula, because you're adding the x's. So watch. If your two x coordinates are a negative 2 and positive 3, if I say negative 2 plus 3 over 2, or 3 plus negative 2 over 2, I still get the same answer. Because negative 2 plus 3 is 1, and 3 minus 2 is still 1. 